Today, I wanna to go over how you can deal with jumbo PDFs in TrialPad. Now, this is something that came up in a recent trial that I was hot seating. Uh, it was a weird situation where they actually, each side needed a hot seater. And so uh, we created a partition within our company here and Laurel hot seated for the plaintiff and I hot seated for the defendant. And a problem that each of us had was that there was this jumbo PDF that was involved in this file. It was a huge uh, map of Chicago. It involved bicycles and uh, the safety of bicycles on bridges. And the bike map that the city of Chicago puts out was critically important and as uh, a part of this case. And one of the things that we both realized early on, although we couldn't talk about it during the case because we were partitioned, uh, one of the things we both realized is that the map PDF that they wanted to use was an extremely high resolution PDF. It had lots of layers built into it and it took forever to use. Let me jump into trial pad so you could see kind of some of the issues that we were running into. It was plaintiff's exhibit seven that we were working with and this PDF itself, it wasn't that big. It was maybe like 27 megabytes uh, big, but it took a really long time for it to load up. And then when it did, it was really difficult to work with. So right now I'm pinching and zooming, uh, but it just takes forever for the app to catch up with it. I don't think it's a RAM problem because when I open the PDF on my laptop, uh, that has plenty of RAM, plenty of memory, uh, really fast hard drives. Uh, everything still takes a little bit of time to zoom in and manipulate and move around. And so there were two areas of interest uh, that were important, at least for the side that I was working for, I was working for the city. Let me double tap on that to come back out. We wanted to go to the area where the Chicago River intersected with Chicago Avenue and there was a bridge there. And so we needed to get really close in on this very small part of the map. Now the resolution wasn't a problem. There was plenty of pixels there. The problem was getting there in, in a quick amount of time. So the attorney would call for it and say, let's zoom in to this spot. And I would zoom in, I would do it. And then I would have to wait. And she would look at me and I would look at her and I would kind of whisper to her, it's coming. Uh, Cause it would just take a little bit of time. And even then uh, I couldn't get as close as I wanted to. So I then would have to do a call out and I would call out the area of interest for this part of the case and then it would pop out and it would be nice and crisp and everyone could see it. It just took a long time to get there. And so once I realized that this was the problem, this wasn't gonna be something that we could work with throughout the rest of the trial. So I thought about a couple of ways that I could deal with this. The first thing that I did was, I knew generally there were two areas that we were gonna be working with. One was the legend of the map to kind of tell readers of the map what all the different colors on the map meant. And the second was the area where the accident had occurred. And so one of the things I did was, I maneuvered the map and it took me a while, so I've done it and now it's moved. Uh, I would move it to the part that I wanted and then I used the um, snapshot button on trial pad to take a screenshot of that area. So I did that, I just let it name it whatever it wants to name it and I created the snapshot. Then I could scroll up after it tells me it's done and it created a snapshots folder for me. Inside of that, I then hit select and then I would just move it I don't like it when it gets buried inside and nested inside the snapshots folder. So I would always just move it to my main kind of documents area and then I would come back and then delete the snapshots folder. All right, so now I have that there. And so what I would do is I would use that and anytime the attorney said, let's zoom in on the area where the accident occurred, I would have that snapshot ready and I could zoom in on it really closely and it would work as well as any other regular exhibit normally works in trial pad. And that worked out really well. And I did the same thing for the legend of the map. Let me show you that. Let's go back to the map. Let's zoom in on the legend, which is up here. I'm gonna pinch and zoom. Usually I pinch and zoom and kind of move at the same time, but this just takes a long time for it to do that. So I let go. Now it's moved. Oh, there we go. Now it's moved. Take a screenshot of that area. Got okay. screenshot number two. Snapshot number two, it's in that folder that I don't like it, how it goes in that folder. Now let's move it out into the main document section. So now it's there. Right, so now I have my two snapshots. So if the attorney said, let's look at the area of interest, I could have that. Let's look at the, uh, the legend for the map. We could do that. And then she always wanted them side by side, not always, but sometimes wanted them side by side. So I would do that as well. And then I can move and manipulate that in there. And then on the other side, I would put in the map and then I'd zoom in on the area of interest. 
that we needed that part of Chicago. And so these were two, this was one PDF that had a lot of stuff going on with it, which made it really laggy within TrialPad. And this is like kind of the workaround that I would recommend for this kind of thing. It kind of got a little bit gummy though later on because then three quarters of the way through the trial, she decided she wanted to go to a completely another place without letting me know that ahead of time, which was fine. It just took us a little while to get there. She wanted to go all the way to the left-hand side. Let's go to a single view. The left-hand side where it says types of bike ways. And so when I had to get there, here's me pinching and zooming to get there. It takes a little bit of time. It's a little bit laggy. Here's my movement. There's the zoom. And so it took, it's taking about a second, which is way longer than things normally take. So how do you, what's the other workaround for this kind of thing? And so I originally had like kind of thought in my head that the problem was that this thing has layers on it. Like when I looked at it um, on the laptop, I was able to see when you originally open the PDF and let me open it up here. You'll see that you see kind of like the colors of the map and then the rest of it pops in. And that's because there's a lot of layers nested into this PDF and let me make it bigger. And every time I change sizes of it, it does the same thing where you see kind of just the color and then the lines and the text and all the other graphics come in after that. It's because the PDF was built in Illustrator, I'm presuming, or something like that with layers and because they're all Adobe products, Illustrator converting to PDF, you retain the layer information, which is useful most of the time. But for us, I thought this was maybe slowing us down. And so I sent it through the tools. I came up to the tools here and typed in flatten, right? And you could do the flattener preview to flatten and get rid of some of those layers and like reduce the amount of graphical information that it's getting. I did that. I thought that would really solve my problem because I thought it was the layers that were confusing trial pad. Uh, but that turned out not to be it. It helped. It certainly made it work a lot better. And I used a flattened version to get me through the rest of the trial and that worked out really well. Um, now that I have kind of the time uh, and comfort of the office to work with this thing even a little more, uh, here's what I would recommend in the future. If you have a jumbo PDF that's graphics that you need to be able to make smaller so that you can play with it in trial pad in a quick and efficient way without losing resolution. Because the other thing to do is we could just down res the whole thing from the native DPI to like 72 dots per inch. Uh, but when we zoomed into that specific area near Goose Island along the Chicago River, we, everything got really grainy and really uh, just not pleasant to look at. And so that really wasn't working for us. So we did a couple of tests and that's what you're looking at here within trial pad. And uh, we've tried converting it uh, to a down res version by using the flattener. We used down here, we flattened it to to 400 uh, DPI, 300, 150, and 72 DPI. None of those really had appreciable differences in terms of performance and how fast it, it was. The 72 DPI image looked terrible once we zoomed in. The 400 DPI image looked good enough and that is uh, is what I use a lot, although mainly what I used was my snapshots from the native resolution. So what I recommend when you have large images like this is that you save that PDF as JPEGs and you save it at a special resolution. When you convert a PDF to JPEGs, you can come up here to the file and save as, and let's just pick a place on the desktop that we can use. And in the save as type, that's where you can choose to save it as a TIFF or JPEG. You're gonna wanna use JPEGs here because that's what trial pad, that's what iPads like. TIFFs give you a lossless kind of conversion, so that would be the highest resolution that you can get. Uh, JPEGs for most people, for most uses, uh, you can't tell there's not an appreciable difference. It matters here because you're using it with an iPad. So let's switch it to JPEG. And the thing to remember is that there's settings that you can choose here. And so when you're saving it, the settings that we would choose are leave all this stuff kind of normal, but in terms of conversions, we'll change the resolution to, and I would pick 600 pixels per inch and we hit okay. And then when we save it, then when we see it and look at it on the desktop, this was a two page PDF. Now we have two JPEGs, each picture, one for each page. So we took those images, put them up to Dropbox and then use that to get it down into the iPad. And that's what we're looking at here. We've also run this test with a whole bunch of different other resolutions just to see what we liked. We tried it at 72, 150, 300 and 600 DPI. 600 DPI, it was counterintuitive to me. I thought that 
the difference between 300 and 600 would be negligible in terms of what I could see, but I thought and I hypothesized that the 600 DPI image uh, would be tougher to work with because it had more data. But it turns out that the 600 DPI image was the easiest to work with in terms of when I click on it and want to zoom in on an area, it zooms in and responds relatively quickly. And when I want to move around, it lets me do that and I can work with it at a speed that's usable for me both in terms of my interface and what I'm publishing to the jurors in court. So that's what I would recommend. 600 DPI, convert your PDFs to JPEGs. Make sure you hit those settings because otherwise I think the default is to use 72 DPI. And let me show you what that looks like. It's not great. It gave us an image that was really quick to zoom in. If you look at that, really responsive. But when we got to the area of interest and I tried to zoom in on it, it just looked like garbage. So I, that's not something that we could use. So 600 was the way to go for us. And that's what I recommend for you guys to do uh, as well. The thing to keep in mind, there's still one caveat after all of this where you still might want to use a screenshot anyway, even if you've done this. Uh, when you have a really large image and I'm not just talking, it doesn't have to just be bike maps or maps in general. If you have schematics or architectural drawings or engineering drawings, those might seem like they're just regular sized PDFs, but when you actually look at what the file is, it's being generated from a CAD drawing system. Those files are going to be extremely large and have a lot of detail in them. And so this is the same kind of issue you're gonna run into. I can zoom in a lot. And by converting it to JPEG, it's really fast for me to zoom in and I can work with it. But I don't know if it's an iPad issue or I don't know if it's a trial pad issue. I'm suspecting it's an iPad issue. I can only pinch and zoom so much. So I can look really close to get into the loop here and I'm holding it down and I'm, pin I'm pinching it open. But as soon as I let go, it bounces back to its like maximal level of zoom. And so to get any more detail than what I have here, even though I have visual detail in the file itself, for me to actually show it to anyone, I have to use a call out and zoom in even closer to get that last level of zoom. So if I wanna get even more zoom, I gotta do another call out still of an even smaller area of interest. So that's just something to keep in mind, a limitation of kind of the system that we're working with here if you're dealing with jumbo PDFs within TrialPad. So I hope that clears it up for you guys. If you have any similar issues with similar types of documents, if you run into this and you've solved that problem a different way, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. Let me know and I'll talk to you guys down there. Thank you.